10-year veteran Craig Morton was greeted unceremoniously by the New York Jets, while his counterpart, another 10-year veteran, at times seems to be posing for a portrait before unleashing his lightning. While Craig Morton had been unsuccessful on his first series, Joe Willie Whiteshoes connected on his first three throws, including a dart to David Knight for the early lead. In the second quarter, Broadway Craig Whiteshoes got the hot hand. Walker Gillette's 41-yarder set up a Morton rollout and an unartistic but effective touchdown flip to Bob Tucker, which gave the Giants the lead 10 to seven. Neither team could score another touchdown until the final seconds of the third period, but near misses are always frustrating. Just ask Emerson Boozer, number 32. Greg Morton's pass to Bob Grimm put the Giants ahead 20 to 13 after three quarters, but the best was yet to come. In the fourth quarter, with a third and goal at the Giant three-yard line, Joe Willie Gimpy faked to Emerson Boozer and then pulled off one of the year's most unusual happenings. Namath said later, I was to take a look and decide if I could do it. The hard part was deciding whether to run. Running it was not tough, and this is from a guy who can't run across the street. Namath's score made it 20 to 20 and sent the game into the second regular season overtime period in NFL history. The Giants won the toss and drove to the Jets 25 where on fourth and one, Pete Gogolak tried to win it with a 42-yard field goal. The official under the upright ruled that the kick was wide. Pete Gogolak says he was robbed. Hungarian lip readers, please avert your glance. After six minutes and 53 seconds of overtime, Joe Namath passed to Emerson Boozer. And the New York Jets were the first team ever to win a regular season NFL game in overtime. Although Joe and the Jets haven't won many big ones since Super Bowl III and only one other this season, they'll never forget the day that Joe slew the Giants in sudden death at the Yale Bowl.